Uh, thank you for coming. Again, we have signing today Josie McDaniel Burkett and Holly May, and we appreciate it very much. <clears throat> uh, Superintendent Spearman is here with me today to make an announcement about the public schools K through 12. Uh, as you know, by uh, executive order early, we closed those schools for a number of weeks, and the decision we have made after much consultation with uh, with a comprehensive group of people, including parents and teachers, administrators, health experts, and otherwise, we will have decided not to reopen the schools for the rest of the school year. So the schools will remain closed uh, for the rest of the school year. And when I issue that order, which will be next week, it will provide a number of things and one of them is flexibility for the districts and for the superintendent and others involved, the teachers, to allow for special needs classes for children, um, perhaps some summer teaching of some kind, and uh, other flexibilities will, that will allow them to do things that they, uh, that they do need to do. And we will all, that also don't present a, the, the threat that a, uh, opening the schools back would do. Uh, also, we will encourage the school districts and the schools and the principals and the teachers and the parents and all involved to find ways to have graduation ceremonies. Uh, we've heard of a lot of imaginative, innovative plans. We know that is a part of American life. is something very important to families and students as well who want to walk at their graduation. We understand that. Uh, we think uh, it is very important. So. We will find ways that that can be accomplished, and we know that's on everyone's mind. <clears throat> I want to say a couple of things. I want to thank the, the parents. Uh, the, the teachers have, have done a marvelous job. Uh, Superintendent Spearman will address some of those in a moment, but it has been remarkable to see the effort that has been made, the highly successful effort. I've never seen anything quite like it, to see that all of our students or have uh, educational advantages and opportunities at home. We've delivered a lot of computers or tablets, a lot of distance learning, a lot of thought, a lot of effort went into it. And this, the meal delivery to those children who are accustomed to getting that in the schools has continued uh, uninterrupted with just a little, a little uh, bottleneck here and there, but it has been remarkable. And I, I think the superintendent under her leadership with all of those involved across the state have delivered millions of meals, somewhere between four and five million regular meals. And, and that service will continue as it always does uh, during the summer months. I want to particularly thank the teachers, the administrators, the superintendents, the, the staffs in the cafeteria, the custodial and others who have done a remarkable job on taking care of the schools and the children. And particularly want to thank the parents who have, uh, I'm sure many of them are, uh, thought they were, were, were through homeschooling their, their children, who've learned that uh, they were back into it. We know it's been difficult. We know particularly with the hundreds of thousands of, of people out of work and the children all at home at times when it was not expected that this has been a, a hardship and a challenge on many, many people in our state. And I want to thank them and congratulate them for the grand job and the, the perseverance and the discipline and the understanding they're showing. I imagine there's some that are more educated than they were when they started because they've had to go back and teach the children things that they'd forgotten about over the years. So to the parents, we say thank you. Parents and guardians and all those that <clears throat> look out for our next generations, that is, our, our children, who are the, uh, the, which are the most important assets that we have. So again, the schools will not reopen, but there will be flexibility statewide for ideas for the, the taking care of those who need uh, special needs instruction and other perhaps summer reading camps, things of that nature. And again, we, we want to be sure that we have graduation ceremonies for those young people and their families. Ms. Spearman. Thank you, Governor. 
Well, good morning, everyone. And Governor, I want to thank you for making this very difficult decision, but you have made the right decision. Uh, the schools are the backbone of the community, and when they're closed, all of us hurt. The children want to go to school, parents want them to go to school, teachers want to be there with their children, and we want to see them growing and learning. But in this very historic uh, pandemic, we have been able to carry on. Uh, really good instruction. I had a call a few days ago with over 4,000 teachers and over 80% of them said they were very, very pleased at how the instruction was going. We do have a few children who are struggling, some families that we've not been able to work with. So I, through this method, I'd like to ask you to please reach out to us for whatever reason. If it's that you're ill or you don't understand the work, please contact your school and your teachers so that we can work together to make sure that all students are moving forward. Our buildings will not open for the rest of the year, but instruction will continue to go on. So as the governor said, we've got to keep our partnership between teachers and families going really well. And thank you so much, parents, for supporting us through this. We're going to continue to support you with good old common sense policies. Uh, the order that the governor, uh, the information the governor will give will allow school districts some flexibility. During their last two weeks of school, their regular calendar year, they will be able to close out their workings, the normal things that they would do. And with social distancing, if there are operations that they can handle with uh, continuing good social distancing, perhaps a parent-teacher conference, if both agree to do it in face-to-face, -face, -face, they can do that. So districts will have a great deal of flexibility in how they will operate for those last two weeks, as well as graduation ceremonies. Seniors, I've heard from you. I've gotten some very articulate, heart-wrenching begs and pleas to let us have graduation ceremony. The governor and I absolutely want that to happen. I can tell you that your district leaders have sent us some very creative ideas of how they're planning on handling graduation, and we want those to go out. And I hope that perhaps I can even come and be there and attend and see some of those from a distance uh, happening. So we're so proud of the hard work. You deserve a graduation ceremony, and we want that to happen for you. We have served over 5 million meals as of today. Not only have they been prepared, but they have been delivered. So a special thank you to our cafeteria workers, bus drivers, and all of those others, sometimes teachers, principals, riding the bus to help deliver those meals. We want that to continue, and it will with all the good work that we have going on in our school buildings. The flexibility to pick up your materials. I know many of you students have your uh, materials, your personal belongings in your classrooms. Uh, you'll be working with your district officials, your superintendents, your principals in a very organized way to, for you to be able to come and pick those up. I would like to say that we do need some really good creative minds to come together as we think about the future. How are we gonna operate our summer reading camps this summer? We want those to go on for our elementary students, summer reading and math support for those who need it. Uh, we are working on a virtual platform if that is how we have to do that. But even going forward to thinking about August and how school will be able to open, I plan to announce a task force in the next few days of creative educational minds across the state and healthcare leaders to help us organize how we can carry out school in August. So it has been um, a burden. Uh, it's been sad to see schools closed, but it has been a joy to see how everyone has pulled together and worked together on this for the good of our children. And that will remain our top priority, the safety, and the learning of our students. As I've said to parents on a couple times, I know this has been stressful, and uh, I know that even after just two weeks of Christmas vacation, you're ready to send your kids back to school. But I thank you for what you're doing. Uh, and I would say again, while instruction is really important, the most important thing for you as parents is to look out for the fiscal and the emotional health of your family. So take care of yourself and your family and do the best you can with the instruction and the time that you have together. Thank you. Thank well, you, ma'am. Any questions? Yes, sir. 
I know um, right you here. announced the Accelerate South Carolina. How are businesses to reopen if schools will remain closed and we may have parents who have to stay home and watch their children because they don't have that child care option now? Those are the kind of things that the group we've put together, a representative group of virtually every aspect of South Carolina life to, to uh, accelerate the revitalization of those buildings, the, the businesses, those are the kinds of questions and ideas that are going to be addressed and starting at, at, at four o'clock tomorrow. As I mentioned, we've, no, two o'clock tomorrow right. at, the, at the Alumni Center at the University. In fact, we, we're over there setting up for that now is why we're doing this a little, little bit early. But those are the kind of questions and answers and innovative ideas that we expect to come forward. And the group that Superintendent Spearman, of course, Superintendent Spearman will be, will be participating, but, and we, we have educators represented in that group who will be eager to hear from the, uh, the group that she just mentioned to have ideas. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Governor. This is a question for Superintendent Spearman. You did mention that there were some struggles or challenges that certain children have been experiencing. Can you um, delve deeper into what those challenges may be? Well, first of all, I think the digital divide in South Carolina has become very apparent. Uh, there are some uh, districts that have been able to carry on their instruction with the teacher uh, communicating through Zoom meetings, WebEx meetings, whatever, uh, with their classmates and really haven't missed a beat. Uh, others have done a blended, some of that, and then some have relied totally on pencil and paper. Um, we, have, we have seen that divide speak out because in some counties, Allendale, for instance, uh, Winsboro, uh, the Fairfield County, even here in Richland County, well, actually we're in Lexington County, I guess, but in portions of the Midlands, there are still areas that families do not have access to the internet. So that makes it more difficult. So that is certainly a struggle for families. We've tried to provide uh, services for them. The, uh, the providers have stepped up to the plate to offer discounted services. We're working with meetings with uh, our co-ops, all of that to, to improve on this. But that's something that we can't just do as educators. That's something that Accelerate South Carolina, I think, will hear loud and clear tomorrow at their meeting. And then there are other children who just don't do well virtually. There's some people who thrive in a virtual environment. Others really need that relationship. And so for those students, we need to get them back together with one-on-one -on -one with a teacher as soon as possible. And do you plan to continue the school buses offering the hotspot Wi-Fi? Absolutely, absolutely. And we have been able to meet the need, as with the requests that we've gotten. We have sent those buses with Wi-Fis to those areas and can do more if there is a need that a district would let us know. Yes, ma'am. So will the last day of school still be June 2nd? You talked about this flexibility for teachers and schools. Are we still planning on last day of e-learning being that June 2nd date? Uh, we, we are asking the districts to continue instruction to their regular day. Some, we have 10 districts in the state that finish on May 29th. The other 70 uh, in during that next first week or maybe that for next Monday in June. So whenever their regular ca uh, calendar, they need to continue their work and their close out until then. Okay. That flexibility, yes. okay, go ahead. that flexibility during those two weeks that the school districts will have, what are some of the things, you said parent-teacher conferences, what are some of the other things that schools could choose to do during that two week period? Well, one thing is they need to pick up materials. Uh, we've got a lot of materials that students have at home, that books, textbooks that need to be returned, cleaned, so that we can get ready for the next year. Uh, some of their personal belongings are at school, so that will be one of the main things that need to happen. Um, there's some one-on-one -on -one assessments that we do with children that we may be able to carry those out, but we want to leave the flexibility to the district for that and that that partnership with the parent if they feel comfortable that they could carry out some of those ones called a dial dial R for four-year-olds where we assess so there there are different types of things certainly students with disabilities who really need it could be a health occupation session uh, it could be some kind of assessment that they would need to do for their individual education plan their IEP but again we want to give that flexibility we're not forcing folks to say you have to do it one certain way but that they have the flexibility to carry it out in the safest way possible yes sir superintendent Spearman do you have any guidance for summer camp or summer programs and do you have a sense of what percentage of students or families haven't been able to really participate fully in education in this uh, pandemic setting? I, I would say that as far as I'll take the last part first what percentage I don't have the exact number so this would be a guess at it but I believe that just knowing from our how many districts were able to implement a full 
technology plan, we had 19 of those, that they went straight uh, all technology. We had about uh, another uh, 20 or so that did a, pl a blended plan. So that leaves 20, 20, 40, about 30 districts then who had to rely on pencil and paper. So uh, somewhere around 20, 25 percent of our districts not, were not able uh, to carry out their instruction through technology. But we will be able to give you those exact numbers. And then the first part of your question. Summer camp, summer yeah. Any we're working right now. Many children had already been invited to attend what we call our third grade summer reading camp uh, by law. Uh, those are children who are not on grade level. So most of them had already been notified that they needed to go. There may be additional students now that not only need help in reading, but in mathematics. So yes, we are working on guidelines for that. It's gonna take some extra funding. We're looking at using some of our CARES Act funding to help support that system. Um, and how many children it would take, um, how many children we might be able to involve in that, uh, that's gonna be left up to the school districts. We're also, we're also working right now on a virtual model in case we're not able to do that face-to-face, -face, that we would be able to uh, provide some type of remediation in reading and mathematics for elementary students virtually. What about programs for kids where families may send them for enrichment? Those, those, those are summer camps. Th uh, again, I think those additional type summer camps, we're gonna have to look at that very carefully. I think that might be something that Accelerate South Carolina would need to look at, and certainly the governor will have to make that decision of when, when are we going to allow those type settings. Uh, so he'll have another difficult decision to make. Yes, ma'am. Has there been guidance on basically grading on a curve or how lenient are we gonna be in promoting students, especially those third graders? Sure, we've sent out uh, quite a bit of guidance and all of that is on our website if any parent or teacher needs to go and look at it but all of that is on our website at ed.sc.gov slash COVID-19. Um, the main guidance that we sent out, our first priority was make sure that seniors could graduate. So we call it credit bearing courses. Any of those courses that are normally taken in high school, there are a few students who may take some credit bearing courses when they're in middle school. So we did send out guidance that all of those, uh, that grading should continue and should continue as normal, but with a good old dose of common sense. You know, uh, if, a, if a student uh, has not done well during this time, they've been trying, turning in their work, but they've not really done as well as they normally would in a one-to-one -one with a teacher, there should be a good dose of common sense. Uh, but we have not given anything out to say, um, you know, no grade lower than, than a certain number. We have not given that guidance. That depends on the local school district. We have said, though, that instead of a third, weeks, third nine weeks grade and a fourth nine weeks grade, that it would be blended together in a semester grade, much like they do in higher ed. That there would be one grade for this third nine weeks and fourth nine weeks that would be entered into our power school. The other grading for kindergarten through eighth grade goes on as normal, just like the districts do. We do not dictate how that is done from the state level. Say kindergarten or first grade. Uh, I mean, how do parents teach, know how to teach their kids to read? <laughs> well, I think it's it's more about uh, a lot of teacher observation. Uh, are they able to read and comprehend and tell you back the story? There are lots of ways to do it. And I think the, the feedback, teachers are able to communicate with their students through um, these WebEx meetings, through online assignments. Uh, they're looking at those uh, through the paper and pencil assignments that are coming back in. Many of our younger children, though, are graded on a satisfactory, unsatisfactory. It's not as detailed as a credit-bearing course, so it's a little easier to do that. We have yes, areas ma'am. that were hit by tornadoes. Um, Say it again. Are, we have areas that were hit by tornadoes and severe weather, obviously, last week. How are you guys going to be working with those districts to make sure those students can complete this the school year? Mm -hmm. Well, we've been in close contact. Uh, unfortunately, there are children who don't have a school to go to nor have a home. <laughs> so the emotional trauma is much more important to deal with that right now than to worry about their instruction. <laughs> So in those areas, that's what I'm saying to folks. You know, you've got to deal with the emotional trauma. We'll help children catch up. We are already working on guidelines and we'll be doing some training for teachers this summer, virtually, 
for what will we do with instruction for those first couple weeks? How will we remediate? How will we assess the students very quickly and remediate them? So in those particular areas up in Seneca, Oconee County, down in Hampton, Colleton, where uh, there was a huge hit, uh, there will be extra support there and extra concern because they really have had an awful lot to deal with. And you know, reading probably is not on their mind right now. It's about getting warm clothes and a house to live in, and that's what they should be working on. Superintendent Spearman, um, you did mention that you had a task force that you'll be meeting with in the upcoming weeks. Um, is the plan as of right now perhaps to maybe open up the school doors for this August or? We would love to, absolutely. We hope that we'll be prepared and ready to go. But you know, that the answer to that question will have to be made as we get a little closer and to see how healthy everybody is and how our system is going. But absolutely, we're gonna be working toward that how can we do it though in a very safe way? Our school buses carry 78 students <laughs> and we sit three to a seat. And our classroom size typically is 800 square feet and you have 24 kids in the classroom. How can, the only way to maintain social distancing is people be standing in the corners. So we're gonna have to really look at this and maybe make some significant changes on how we have been the regular school day. I'm not prepared to say what those would be at this point, but that's what I need, a group to come together who really work in the trenches to help us come up with some ideas. Ms. Uh, so you mentioned um, the first couple of weeks could be remediation. So should a third grade teacher essentially be teaching second grade material for possibly, the first month? Possibly. What we've been looking at are what are those super standards. There's standards of, uh, that students need to achieve, but then there's some that are probably more important than others, those foundational standards. And that's what our group has already been working on internally with some teacher input and principal input. And then we will look at assessing, but a good teacher does this already. A good teachers know how to do this. They know how to assess their children at the beginning of the year and to see where everybody is and start teaching there personalized learning to those students to help catch them up. So I know we're all real concerned about it. I feel very optimistic. I think our students and our teachers are up to the challenge and we can catch them up. We may need a few extra days of instruction and again, we can spend our CARES Act funding on that uh, to add a few extra days to next school year. But I believe our children will survive this and we're all gonna come out stronger. It's gonna be a- Money can all be also be used for technology? The money, there are 12 different areas, and again, I, this is on our website, there are 12 areas that districts have flexibility to spend their <coughs> education stabilization fund of the CARES Act. It includes technology, it includes the emotional support that I think we're really gonna need to use. It can be additional instructional days. It can pay for cleaning of the buildings, which is gonna be a huge cost for us to uh, look at when we start going back. So there, it's very broad. I will say the U.S. Department of Education has done an excellent job responding to us and a lot of good common sense in what they've sent out on this funding. Governor, thinking about, yes, summer, yes, thinking about summer sports, not only just in the community and also in schools, what is your guidance for these kids who want to practice summer sports or are eager to get back playing in the community? Well, we, we encourage everyone to practice social distancing, even in, in sports. But, there, there are a lot of ways to get a lot of good exercise and to uh, practice for sports and still observe that social distancing. But, but we are hoping that the, the, the virus will be easing up on us by then. Uh, we are watching it very closely, as you know, and we'll have announcements to make as we go forward as to what we see and what we recommend. Yes, sir. Perfect, Master, does this order, will it affect summer school, but include summer school being closed? Will summer school be closed? You want to answer? Um, not necessarily. Uh, we'll have to look at it as we get closer. Some school is usually held in June. We could push that back to July. It could even be just a few weeks right before school starts normally in August. So that decision, we'll just have to look at, is it possible to hold it face to face? If not, we will be prepared with a virtual platform. Governor, did that answer your question? Yeah, and one more. Uh, have you made a decision on when and whether you'll reopen close contact businesses? Um, say the, say have the, you made a decision on when or, or the, whether you'll reopen close contact? That, that, that we, we restricted, that it had close contact like the uh, barber shops and beauty parlors and, and those, those kinds of things. We are, we've not made a decision. 
we're in the process of gathering the information, getting the facts, getting the science, and taking the measurements. We follow the old carpenter's rule, which is measure twice and cut once. <laughs> and we don't want to make any mistakes. And as you know, we we went into the virus very carefully in a deliberate manner. And I think that we we did it as well or better than any, any state in the country as the results are, are I believe, are, are showing it. And we want to come back out the same way and revitalize our economy so that we can regain our competitive position uh, with the with the rest of the country and particularly in the southeast so those those decisions will be made and will be announced and but we're working on it uh, working on it right now that is as well as uh, everything all the businesses that we've restricted restricted anyway are being uh, analyzed and studied based on the facts and the data we'll make those decisions yes ma'am um two questions um one of them is should we expect there to be any teacher or staff layoffs um perhaps in the next upcoming weeks as well as just confirming if e-learning classes will they be ending on may 15. okay the e-learning would normally take place until whenever that district is is ready to uh finish out their regular calendar year there are some states who have closed down all learning. Uh, we did not think that was a good idea in South Carolina. So I really, I want to say too, I, I appreciate uh, how well our school districts, we have really stayed together as a unit and everybody has performed really well. I was on the phone yesterday with some folks who deal across the nation with other states and they really complimented South Carolina, how well prepared and how quickly we put this in to order. And your second part, your question? Um, you should expect any layoffs to teachers? Hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully not. Uh, our teachers have been paid uh, with throughout this time. Uh, the districts, uh, obviously, I think anyone would recognize that revenue, tax revenue will be down. And we're waiting on the General Assembly to pass that continuing resolution, which will help us with our budgets and starting up the year. And then they, you know, that will depend on what the revenue is and what the General Assembly does with the school budget when they come back into session next fall and know more about what the revenue has been. Uh, I think every precaution would be taken to keep as many of our folks, we need these instructional folks working. So that decision would be made later by the General Assembly. Yes, ma'am. Going back to the sports question, maybe this is for you, Superintendent Spamer. For those sports and extracurricular activities that start over the summer, what is the guidance for that, for instance, football practices and band practices or, you know, cheerleading, things that start before the school year starts? Well, we'll have to work very closely with the governor and our health officials to know if it's safe. Normally, the rule in South Carolina, working with the South Carolina High School League, is if school is in session, then sports can go on. <laughs> Obviously this is a little different situation but we'll be working very very closely uh, to see what the health of our people are, the health of our communities over the summer and that would be a decision that the governor could certainly uh, take uh, to end that but uh, again we're just going to have to get a little closer to see how well everyone's doing and if school's going to be able to open physically uh, in August, then I would say uh, it's a good chance that those practices could resume, but we'll have to get a little closer to as, 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 as you can tell, everything we're doing is based on a lot of information analysis of the people in the area, the professionals. That would include, of course, a DHEC in the terms of businesses. That would be labor licensing and regulation, those, those organizations. And, agencies that have insight of course park recreation and tourism and Dwayne Parish and, and all of those we're taking all of these facts information and professional advice from from every source uh, that we have to make these decisions yes ma'am uh, early on teachers were told not to introduce new material and obviously that changed mm -hmm. can you address when and whether all subjects all standards should at least be attempted to be covered mm -hmm. this year sure that's a really good question uh, we've learned a lot as we've gone through this uh, I don't think any of us ever foresaw that we would be out this long so our original uh, direction to teachers and to districts was that no new information would be taught it would be you know reflecting and, and repetitive um, work so that changed very quickly and we also have changed the guidance to make it a little more reasonable uh, sending home work for two or three days is different from sending home work for 12 weeks. And we realized, honestly, that we were sending too much. 
and we needed to ease up a bit to relax the stress on families and give students time to think about what they were learning rather than so much work. So we have that guidance uh, is now on the website and um, I think that again, teachers know what the most foundational standards are that need to be taught and that is what they've tried to address. Now some of them have been able to go forward with hopefully all of the standards, but I can't say that until we really review with everyone, but certainly folks are focused on those foundational standards that children would need to accomplish in order to be able to go through the next grade. That's a question that I've gotten from a lot of children, am I gonna make my grade? And I remember when I was in school, I, you know, I made pretty good grades and I would still be worried about, am I gonna make my grade? Yes, you're gonna make your grade unless there's just an extraordinary circumstance where you are really far behind and your parents should already have been talking with your teacher about that. So children will be able to go to the next grade, but our instructions will be for that teacher to work with the previous year's teacher to really be sure that we remediate and cover, make sure and assess where students are. Last question. Go. Go. How many employees in the school districts have tested positive for COVID-19? And I know we've heard some uh, food service workers and some other employees. How many people have kind of in the school districts been hit with this or yeah. Department of Education? Yeah. Uh, I don't have an exact number. There have been a handful across the state. Uh, we have worked very closely with DHEC and followed their protocol as to how that should be handled. I, but I don't have the exact number. Perhaps we could get that for you, but I don't have that. We appreciate you coming very much, and this uh, I want to say again, we, we appreciate the, the parents, the, the diligence and the, the stress that a lot of our parents under, as, as well as uh, students. The great job's been done by the, the teachers and, and all the, the district personnel, everyone working together to see in this educational, this most important critical education arena that we are, we are still making progress. And as I look around South Carolina and I, I see the, the progress we're making and the determination of the people, <clears throat> it reminds me of a quote from the, the great uh, boxer champion Muhammad Ali when a young fella asked him one time, said, Champ, didn't you get knocked down one time by either George Foreman or Joe Frazier or somebody? And he said, Son, uh, I'm, either, I'm never down. I'm either up or I'm getting up. <laughs> and so that's what we're doing. We're not down. We, we're we getting up and we're going back to the top and our Accelerate SC is designed to do that, to revitalize the, the uh, economy and if we can keep educating the children then we will go right straight to the top. Thank you.